This is the Hallmarkies podcast, and we are so excited today. We are here to talk with one of the great uh, Hallmark directors, and uh, she's a writer and producer as well. We're here to talk to Lee Friedlander, and I'm Rachel, and Amber is here. Hi, everybody. And uh, Lee, thank you so much for being willing to join, join us and talk with us. Thank you guys so much for having me. I am a fan as well as happy to be joining you. I listen to you every time, and especially on my movies. My favorite thing is if you guys like my movie, I'm happy. So Tracy and I and all the other writers that I work with always listen to your podcast to go, the Hallmark, he's like this. Okay, we did good. (laughs) Well, thank you. That's very sweet. Uh, Well, we're so excited. We're so excited to, uh, we're so excited to talk to our first director on the podcast. This is really cool. Oh, thank you. I know we get, we, we, we're behind the scenes most of the time. People want to talk to the actors, but we're involved as much too. Yeah. More, even more. (laughs) Yeah. It's hard work, but we love it. We love it. And I'm very lucky to be directing Hallmark movies. So that's so great. I love my job. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up, uh, you've done writing, directing, and producing. Like, how did you end up uh, becoming, uh, becoming this, uh, all these things? Well, I started more years than I'm going to admit on podcasts um, as an actress <laughs> and, a theater, <laughs> and a theater director in New York. Okay. And when I was young through college. And then I moved to Los Angeles and became a producer and did a lot of indie films but it's a really tireless job to be like raising money for indie movies and then making them and trying to distribute them and it's it's really hard and I got really I got very burned out and I just wanted to do fun projects and and direct but I kept fixing other people's work and Mm -hmm. finally after doing a dozen or so movies I said I just I think I said to my manager, she's, I said, I just can't do it. I don't want to do this anymore. She said, what do you want to do? I said, I just want to direct the Hallmark movies. <laughs> and I think I said Hallmark and Lifetime movies. But mm-hmm. I said, I just want to do, and I say this fondly, just want to do cheesy, romantic, lovely, brilliant Hallmark and Lifetime movies and have fun. And, and um, you know, when you say things, they happen, as you know. So yeah. I said, you know what, I'm going to. And I worked really hard to find the right project and I worked my first project with Snow Bride that I produced with Tim Johnson um, mm-hmm. which was a lot of fun several years ago and you know showing Hallmark that I could I know their brand as a producer and then uh, that did really well and I just kept finding scripts and developing them and bringing in Tracy who wrote Snow Bride we brought her in and then she mm-hmm. now is one of their biggest writers and we just love Hallmark so we kept finding projects and pitching them and you know, Hallmark is a wonderful family. You you treat them with respect and do a good job. They love you forever. So I'm very lucky that the, the couple of projects I did at first for them did well. And, and they just keep you in the house. They keep you in the family. And we all are loyal to each other. And it's, it's a lovely place to be because, you know, you, you'll hopefully have a continuous job because everybody knows the brand and works together as, as almost like a studio deal. So it's like it's almost like we all... Are, are in the same family and they do the TCA parties. And yeah. so once I started doing these, it's really, it's hard to, to leave because it's so mm-hmm. fun. And there's, you know, with Christmas and all the other holidays and I just got to go to Ireland. I, it's a wonderful company to work for and they're just fun projects to do because you get to just play and be romantic and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, make Candace Cameron twins, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and it is interesting to me the way Hallmark does, you know, recycle directors and, and cast. It really reminds me of like 1940s golden age Hollywood when they right. had the studios with their, you know, their stable of actors and, and all that stuff. And so I, I, it's kind of really fun. It harkens back to like when George Cukor was doing all those movies and all, it's, just, it's just great. I just love it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's what we feel like. We feel like we're all part of you know, we all, we've all sort of worked with each other and it's almost like trading, you know, we keep trading who's going to work with who next time and who's going to get to do this. And we feel that way. And it's, and it's a nice, it's a nice feeling in a business that's so, has so much vagrancy. It's mm-hmm. really nice for yeah. this, them to, to, to have this for us. Well, and you're providing and something it, so. that, that Hollywood just isn't making rom-coms anymore in, like, like in the kind of style of, you know, there'll be sort of, R-rated ones, but 
there's very rare that you get like a fun, sweet romantic comedy anymore. <laughs> and so it's, it's no, you can't, you yeah. can't. It's 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 a you know I always say you know, there, there's Nancy Myers and there's the older you know pretty women's of the day, and Sandra Bullock movies are non-existent in the yeah. feature world. So yeah. to be that. That, that's you know to have that sensibility as a director it's nice to have an outlet that I get to make these romantic comedies and have a place to to do them because mm-hmm. you're right the studios are not making them anymore they're making the big r-rated comedies that are you know very brash and, mm-hmm. and yeah. big big star driven properties yeah. <clears throat> so I've never gotten I've talked to some animation directors uh over on my other mm-hmm. channel but I've never talked to a live action director so I'm curious what <laughs> What is a day in the life of a director like? What is it, what is it you kind of do, I guess? I mean, obviously you make the movie, but um, how does it kind of yeah, yeah. play out? Uh, it <laughs> um, in develop, there's, you know, there's development phase, there's pre-production, there's shooting, and then there's post-production. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's through everything. So it depends on which a day in the life of development is usually once it's greenlit with... Um, the producer and and hallmark it's you know doing notes on the script and then once you get find out where you're going to be shooting it's going into pre-production where you have to set everything up because if you don't we only you know these are fast we make these movies fast so pre-production is so important so a day in the life of pre-production is looking at casting tapes driving around ireland i'll just play put royally ever after because that's what's coming up you know driving around ireland location scouting running in and out of castles Usually a day in the life of a director is freezing and I have a giant coat on and you're always <laughs> outside in the weather. And I'm kind of a girly girl, so it's sort of funny that I'm always in the mud and the rain and freezing, but I love it. Um, so it's running around, as I'm running around location scouting, it's still working on the script and casting and working with all the heads of the departments, the line producer and the first assistant director scheduling. And we just schedule the whole thing and plot out what we're going to do every day and what scenes are going to do every day. And while we're still location scouting and casting and wardrobe fittings and picking wardrobe and picking styles and production designer, picking what things are going to look like. So every single thing you might not know down to the lipstick color is planned out. <laughs> Every hairstyle for every scene, every piece of wardrobe for every scene is pre-planned out. Every, you know, and then once all those pieces are lined up, which are, you know, lots of moving parts, once we start shooting, it's, you know, I have to prep the shot list. I have to know what pieces I need of the movie to shoot on what camera and what angles and what size lenses and how I want the camera to move and working with the camera department and working with the actors on performance because you shoot out of order. So where are we in the story emotionally? What do I need to get from the actors that I know in editing I'm going to need to use for a scene? So it's collecting. I always say it's collecting all the pieces. Uh-huh. It's collecting all the pieces until you get to post and then it's in an editing room, which I love because then I get left alone. You know, you're in the editing room 12 hours a day to put it together and there's a million ways to put it together so it's picking music then picking music and score and you know, like this this movie in particular I put in really big Hans Zimmer temp score that probably cost a million dollars and then <laughs> everyone loved it and I'm like oh shoot how are you <laughs> copy that <laughs> or uh but I but we found a wonderful composer who did uh, you'll hear it it sounds like a feature film score it did an amazing score and we were lucky enough to have a 20 piece orchestra to, to fill it in and so it it's it's a, a day in the life of, of a director's you know thinking of house on your feet with a thousand juggling balls and everyone looking at you for the answer of how do we get it done in the in the time we have to do it and playing with the actors that's my favorite part. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's, I hope that made sense. No, that's that a did. lot of information, but <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it yeah. makes so that's, a, that's kind of like a day in, like like today. As of right before I got off the phone with you, we're almost done. I am reviewing the final sound mix and talking to my producer and think, you know, being like, "This sounds like we have to fix that and fix that because we have to turn it in a couple of days." So we're like, you know, finding the last things that need to be tweaked before we turn it in. Yeah. So it's wow. down, to, down to the ti- down to the tiniest. Her cough sounds too loud. You know, down to the tiniest <laughs> little detail is is thought about. Wow. So you're yeah. still making. Uh, we're two two weeks out. You're you're making uh, corrections and and things like that still. Yeah, we turn it in. We turn it in this week. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
Which, and they and it goes um, on the air in two weeks. Yeah, that's so. But cool. they've seen, you know, the network has seen yeah. you know, it all and, and works closely with us along the way to their movie. So we're all as a team. We all work as a team mm-hmm. in yeah. the decision making. We're just always but in awe fun. at the turnaround on the Hallmark production schedule because you know, like, you. <laughs> it's unbelievable that you guys are working on the movie and it comes out in a week. Like, it's just there's they, too, they just I it's know. just like such a science over there where they it can is. just. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. They have amazing. a very well-oiled machine and really wonderful executives that know what they're doing. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's planned though. It's, it's, it's organized chaos. It's planned. Yeah. Everything is planned and everyone knows there's enough time to do what we need to do. That's so. really cool. That's what we do, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun to be able to, you know, I'm, I'm a hopeless romantic. So it's mm-hmm. really fun to, for the characters to live vicariously through like if you knew my personality and you saw my movies you'd say oh that's something we would do like it's fun for me to put my personality into some of these fun moments in in Hallmark and the funny moments and those are the times like I get to be a director is when I get to take the Mm -hmm. what's what's on the page and elevate it with the actors and play and Mm -hmm. make those moments happen that are not scripted but expected you know the the magic when they look people look at each other and the the romance and with this one Torrance and Fiona had both they're both just fantastic actors but they had amazing chemistry on and off the camera so you, you'll see it really comes across and it needed to because what was nice about this movie is normally in most Hallmark movies people meet in the movie then they fall in love mm-hmm. shortly mm-hmm. after and then they break up and then then they get together at the end and that's their we're going to be there together forever but when I meet when you meet Danny and Sarah they have already been together a year and are already in love yeah so we start the romance madly in love so you get to see them being a an in love couple going through this and then the trials and tribulations that might pull them apart and then getting back together so I think you're going to feel I felt a little more because they have history mm, so yeah. when they have their moment where it might not work out spoiler um, <laughs> you know where it might where it might not work out you you like like people are cry, like people cried like I said when I said this and one of the executives said I cried in a good way it's like you really feel bad mm-hmm. yeah and then when they get together you're even happier so I was it was fun to have that romance already there uh, not mm-hmm. that I don't love when we they meet because the next one I'm doing, you know, they meet and they fall and it's fun to have the first looks and the first kiss. And But it was just nice to have that already established in love relationship, especially yeah. with Sarah. And that makes so much sense Fiona that Torrance. the stakes of having, you know, an established relationship with a deeper connection would obviously be higher than on these ones where they've known each other for five days. But um, it's interesting. I didn't even consider that. But you would be right, and I'm excited. I'm even more excited to see it now. And perfect companion to the royal wedding, you know, with Megan. Yeah, I think. Harry. That, yeah, nice point. I know they, they. Again, Hallmark knows that they they <laughs> thought this out, and I'm really happy. It's like watch Megan and Harry and watch us. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, gonna be fun. Really cool. It's gonna be fun, and we. It was really because we shot at a real castle. Like we shot this mm-hmm. amazing castle and it's gorgeous so it's it you, you feel authentic because it is an actual castle in ireland yeah. and mm-hmm. the real horses we got horses and clips and big drone shots and feel like you're there and in this mm-hmm. world well i <laughs> wanted to ask you about uh all for love last year that you did yeah Sarah. so this so is great. one of my favorites of the year last year I've made my top 10 Aww. And I really thought (laughs) this was refreshing because I think that you had like Steve Bassick, he normally plays a villain. So it was kind of fun for him to see like this gruff, rough and kind of guy, like be all soft and tender and sweet. And I Mm like how he, uh, he writes, he's, he's just trying to get up the courage to talk to her at the end, but then he can't do it. And so he writes the letter and I thought it had so many sweet scenes, like when he's teach her how to swim or, and I thought it was really funny, all the training scenes. And I don't know, I just felt like it was something a little bit different from Hallmark and was just 
really good. I really liked it. Oh, thank you. That was that was a lot of fun. And Sarah, you know, is so funny. And I, I feel mm-hmm. that way too. I think I feel like Hallmark let me have a little more comedy and a, do things a tiny bit. I wouldn't say out of brand because still it's still on brand, but it was a mm-hmm. little just a little push, like like the pool scenes, like that was a unique romantic thing that I think they've never done, mm-hmm. and 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 the, the, I call it the private Benjamin moments, and I pushed the comedy a little bit because it, physical comedy because the story mm-hmm. needed it because she was in field training, so it was mm-hmm. it was fun to have a little more physicality, and it was re- it's really fun to see Steve this big you know man, he's like you know the Sarah's tall, so he's very tall. He's like a big guy. Be mm-hmm. kind of uh, vulnerable and goofy. Yeah. And he said he loved it. He said he's so happy that I we wanted I wanted his character that way. That we really wanted him to find that vulnerability and the, the charm and the almost like the moonlighting banter. Remember the old moonlighting yeah. banter? Mm-hmm. Kind of like like that. So I loved making that movie. Again, it was very cold in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> But Sarah, I mean, Sarah could read the phone book and it's brilliant. So I was just lucky to have Sarah Lou. And Steve, Steve is the nicest man in the world and talented and keeps everybody happy on set. And he just doesn't have a bad day. So it, yeah. it was, again, I got really lucky with casting. But I felt it too. I, 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 I'm very lucky that I feel like I'm getting special ones. I'm sure all, all the directors feel that way about their movies and Hallmark, but I really feel like I'm getting some special ones to tell. So I'm lucky that it was a little different. Yeah, yeah I like that one a lot. I like mm-hmm. that one a lot. Yeah, it's so oh. great. And it's, you know, Tracy again. Tracy, what a, mm-hmm. what a champ. But that one is so funny. It, it's really great. And what I love also about that movie is all of the peripheral characters, you know, the rest of the people in her company, uh, I mean, her like army company, not mm-hmm. the publishing company, they mm-hmm. all seemed so developed and... Mm-hmm. I, I am a huge fan of the secondary characters, um, so I just really appreciate it. Thank you. Like, the, the treatment of those characters. So, I, so great job. Thank you. Thanks. Well, <laughs> I, work, I work really hard with the actors to not make things superficial, because you mm-hmm. can, a lot of actors can say the same line so many different ways, but if you build character and you really work on performance, you can feel it, that they really build a history. Mm-hmm. You know, like Steve and his sister, like, we, we really built the two of them you know, I made them, I wanted, I had them hang out together and they really bonded as pretending like there's brother and sister instead of just two actors coming to start reading lines. It's, I tend to push actors in a good way, I think. And I think actors want to be directed, you know, and we all want to work together to, to, to say, hey, this is a TV movie, but let's pretend we're doing the best TV movie in the whole world. It's like a feature. What would we do with these characters and how would we rehearse it and how would we... Mm-hmm you know, really talk about it and not just, oh, we've 10 minutes to get the scene, just read the lines. You know, it's, yeah. I like, I like telling a story with people, characters that feel real and authentic and fun and fun. I like everyone to be fun. Yeah. Well, and it's so impressive when you're able to pull those kinds of performances from the actors, um, especially knowing the, the crazy production time that you guys probably only have, um, like insane amount of takes would be like five and you're like we gotta do it in two takes and it's really impressive <laughs> yeah. that you can see you know how much preparation goes into the scenes that they're able to pull them off in such a short period of time and are able to get so much from those characters so mm-hmm. i'm just, just i just really yeah, approve of that it's, one. Oh, thanks it's sometimes it's a happy accident i mean sometimes it's just the right director with the right actors and the mm-hmm. right script and the right moment because sometimes you just literally have to say like two or the go back in line and say this and they just get it like sarah you just give her one tiny bit of direction and she just takes it and goes the direction you think it's so it's just yeah. really so good so you know and steve and everyone they are so professional that they're all experienced very experienced actors that they know their crafts very well god we call them the queens of hallmark the uh yeah the, your uh lacy chabert's and and uh <laughs> like that and you got to not only the have queen. one queen of hallmark you had her <laughs> duplicated <laughs> i know Christmas movie what was that like doing a parent trappy that doing that whatever that special effect thing is um to it was make really hard <laughs> <laughs> it was really well it's it's again hallmark i was so lucky that when i you know i created this with with Tracy and we wrote it and it's sort of loosely based on my sister and I although we're not twins we look like twins but we're not and when I 
pitched it to them. I said, if, if this goes forward, I really want to do this the orphan blacklight way with the right, the techno dolly crane. I don't want to do it like the seventies in the cheap way. I really want to show that we can do this on mm-hmm. our time and our budget. And I, and we can, we can step up and really make this not just a cheap, but a really do it with the, the visual effects way to, that lives up to what's happening in the industry right now. And they said, great if you can make it work love it and they, you know we all talked about you know I was so honored that they the had one of the heads of the network read the script with the executive and said we like this so much we want to give this to, to Candace and you know Tracy and I were like ah! you know up and down screaming <laughs> because when they want to when they want to give it to one of their queens as you say it makes us very happy because it means that we're doing a good job so we're like well we for Candace and then when we found out that she liked it wanted to do it where we I was just really happy and met with her a few times and was a little intimidated in the beginning because she's, you know, been around longer than I have in, in the business. I'm older than her, but she's so experienced in. We just got along great. She, again, couldn't have been nicer. And I'm telling you, that is, I've never seen someone work so hard because I don't know if you know, but we have a thing called a call sheet. Mm-hmm. And the person that's number one on the call sheet is the, the lead, you know, and the, mm-hmm. the lead actress is usually the number one. And the number two is usually the leading man. But because she plays both parts, I said to Candace, this is the first time you're the number one and the number two. Because <laughs> we had to schedule the two sisters like they yeah. were different actors because they're in different scenes. But then some or they're in scenes together. So it was it was a learning curve for all of us because I'd never done the 20 before. I had spent a year researching how to do it and learning the equipment and working. You know, I found this DP who had done it before. So we knew what to do. And mm-hmm. Candace, same thing. We all learned together. Mm-hmm. So just the kindest and so so talented and you ne- if she didn't feel well you did not know it it just mm-hmm. worked hard wanted every day to be the best for the movie it was i was very very impressed and honored to to be able to work with her on that and just to call her, her my friend after. alone She's- yeah just her output alone you can tell she she's doing yeah house. she's like doing the roar tea garden movies like it is pretty impressive uh <laughs> and and i know uh, Switch for Christmas got the uh, number two all-time uh, Hallmark Channel Christmas premiere, so that's pretty exciting as far as ratings. Yay! <laughs> no, we were really happy about that. That was we worked really hard, so I was thrilled about that. Yeah, I Candace, was really really thrilled about that. Candace has Candace. Four, four out of the top five debuts of all yeah. time. Wow, well, so. she's she's she deserves it. Yeah, <laughs> she it. she's amazing. So, are, yeah. are you allowed to tell us anything about the, your any upcoming projects uh, aside from Royal Ever After, or are those? Um, quiet? probably not. I could say <laughs> that that Tracy and I are working on possibly a fall movie, but it's not. You know, that's all I could probably say, and it may or may not happen. But we are um, plotting out a, a fall movie. Cool. It may change from being a fall movie to a spring movie. You never know. No, no, it's a fall movie. But it, you know, whether it gets one hundred percent greenlit and goes, you know, gets yeah. made, we'll, we'll we'll know. But um, it looks good. It's going to be again. So I think you'll like it. It it reminds me a little of All for Love, where there was a lot of fun things that you wouldn't normally have mm-hmm. in it. So there's some fun, fun. Oh, cool. Well, what I can tell you is, two people they fall in love, they break up, they get back together. Ooh. <laughs> This is unbelievable. (laughs) I know. They never do that. (laughs) That happens? (laughs) What? Taylor, they wind up together at the end. (laughs) But here's the thing. If they kissed before the 58th minute, Ah, the the second hour, then that would be, you know, if there was more than two minutes left when they kissed, I would die of shock. (laughs) On that note, I'm curious after you watch... Uh, royally ever after uh, oh yeah i mean they get engaged they have to kiss then right well yeah well they're already together when we first meet them so there's, Ugh, that'll be so refreshing uh, yeah yeah because... so there's, there's, some, there's some gentle kissing throughout <laughs> yes we have that's what i approve of i don't like big smooches i just like little, little ones no little gentle no, no. Ones. you don't need yeah no you don't need nobody <laughs> needs to do that but you just you get like... to see their love if, uh, like yesterday in the movie it was a very good movie the Daro and Daro they had this like it was like at the uh, I don't know like a 40 minute mark and these are people this is their second movie so they've like 
they're an established couple basically and they got so close to kissing. I was like, and they then got they're an like, kiss. they're like, we need to stop and think this over. Or so they said something like that. And I was like, what? They went the whole movie without kissing. I'm like, <laughs> Rachel, Rachel is obsessed with kissing. It's like her favorite thing. It's romance. Come on. <laughs> She's supposed to kiss. Oh my gosh. So anyway, yeah, it was pretty fun. I let the script, I let the script in the network to dictate how much kissing I can do. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're fine. We're fine. The script, though. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Network, but I, but that one, I would have been the same way. I'm like, could they can kiss? They've been together. <laughs> Let them kiss a little, you know. Yeah, yeah. All would right. you ever want to do one of those murder mystery movies? I would love to. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. I would love mm-hmm. to do everything Hallmark has in the air. I'd love to do a murder mystery. I'd love to direct some other episodic. I'd love to create mm-hmm. a series for Hallmark. You know, mm-hmm. many things that I'm. I have in my wish list of things to do with them. I, yeah, I wanted, I would love, you know, my dream is to direct a hall of fame. So, mm-hmm. you know, you keep, keep, keep doing them and we'll see what happens. That they should do, they should be, you, we have this whole little spiel that we uh, think they should be using the male actors a little bit more. They use the Queens sometimes too much and that there should be a movie around uh, like a firehouse movie where you have two dueling firehouse houses of like hunky guys and uh they can have more and more men yes and they could have like a pancake cook-off like thing (laughs) that would be like the the, and uh is there any romance this is just men (laughs) i have this secret dream where like there's also like a lady fire woman who's like the daughter of one of the fire truck chiefs and she has like a West Side Story slash Romeo and Juliet relationship with a guy from a rival firehouse, you know. Yeah. So, oh, maybe you should send us some story ideas. By the way, we're always looking for ideas. Send me. I, I'm not shy. You have a good idea. Send it over. Send it <laughs> you don't. Over. You don't want to open that you know, rabbit hole. Yeah, by the way, you never know. You know, Rachel, always, poor Rachel. Like every time, every 25 minutes, I'm like Rachel. What if they made a movie like this? And it's just. It gets, it you gets never more know. convoluted. <laughs> you never know. But the, it's funny you said about the firehouse because, you know, not only do I make them, I also watch them. And one of my favorite Hallmark movies is the one about the, the firemen. Do you remember the, the Nine Lives of Christmas? Is that, yeah, it's with the cat, the fireman with the cat. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's so like, amazing. Who is like a fireman and a cat? Like two of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> and she was adorable. Wasn't she adorable? She in is that? so she incredible. Adorable. Yeah, I feel like she just yeah. doesn't get used enough. I don't know who. I wish I could just like talk to Hallmark casting and be like, just <laughs> just put Kimberly Sestet in a movie with Paul Campbell. It's like all I need. And <laughs> <laughs> I know I love her. She's she's on a lot of my list too. She's she's adorable. She's, she's just adorable. and she just has such yeah. gr- great comedic timing. Uh, okay, we're weirdly gushing. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite aside from the one you did from this last countdown for christmas do you have a favorite say you know because i a lot of my we're all friends and family but i i always love ron oliver's i love i did love the christmas train uh-huh. the christmas train is that's play the christmas, and i love my friend alex Rice's one and i'm not remembering the title at the moment um was one about the inn oh the mistletoe inn yeah or I like the, the mistletoe inn. Or, or the, it could have been the um, what's the one with Allison Sweeney? Christmas at Holly Lodge. Yeah, it could be that. But I don't. I love me some. I love me some Allison Sweeney. <laughs> She's so good yeah. too. She's the best. They're all you know. They're all fun. They're all fun. Yeah. Um, I did like Ron. So I did like the the train one. I thought that was it felt old Hollywood to me. So that was mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> but they're all good. They're all like it's hard to pick favorites. Oh, it's so great. It's like he's so great. And, what was your favorite this year? My favorite, I, I really liked one that was actually technically Christmas in July called Home for Christmas Day um, that was really well done. Um, I really liked Miss Christmas and um, uh, shoot, my, my brain. Miss Christmas was one of my favorites of, so, of regular Hallmark kind of for Christmas. Oh. Yeah, it was really good. Nice. Oh, and uh, nice. I wrote uh, uh, the... Um, Christmas and Angel Falls. That was my other favorite. Oh, that was a good one. Was that the one with the angels? With yes. Um, 
with Rachel Boston as yes. the, with Rachel Boston, yeah. I produced Ice Sculpture Christmas with Rachel. Yes, we know. We love Ice yeah. Sculpture Christmas. Ice Sculpture oh, Christmas okay. is my number five Hallmark movie of all time. Which is oh, really high because wow. there's like thousands. Like <laughs> Aww, that's sweet. Yeah, it's really good. Rachel's Rachel's another one who is just a dream. Yes. All, I think everybody who works on Hallmark movies loves Hallmark movies. So we're all happy to be there. Yeah. Um, I, I think occasionally you find some people, some actors who are like not in love with Hallmark movies and you can tell and they don't last very long. Yeah. But n- but none of those people we've mentioned. We don't talk <laughs> about those people. <laughs> those p- people shall remain nameless. Yes, right. <laughs> But yes, and then I do also want to briefly talk about one of my all-time favorite, if not my favorite, lifetime Christmas movie, A Gift Wrapped Christmas, which you were involved in. Oh, God, in. you've seen all my movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love A Gift Wrapped Christmas so much. Thank you. Um, and it's, it was very was similar really to fun. one that Hallmark did that same year. Um, yeah, the shopper, personal shopper one. Yeah, but this one's better. Don't tell the other people. <laughs> I won't tell you. Um, but I even, even though the actress this. from that one was in Snow Bride. Was yes, it, but, Katrina yeah. Love, but um, Katrina. she's she's great. It wasn't it it was just they were both good, but this one was just so amazing and Meredith Hagner was just like oh, I mean, so perfect. It was insane. Yeah, it was that that's a good example. Like when I we did it for Lifetime, so they mm-hmm. wanted their brand is a little uh, different. So um we we just went for you know, the comedy was well Meredith is we I, we improved so much in that movie. I have to tell you, we they gave me a lot of leeway to do whatever I wanted mm-hmm. to work on the script. So we we you know of course shot the script, but also improved a lot in the scenes to play. And Meredith is another one like Sarah who could just read the phone book and be funny. So yeah. we just had a really good time. So I I really enjoyed that one as well. Yeah, and, and that, Meredith and I yeah. became good friends after oh, that. It's so. amazing. Um, oh, and I just, I don't you. know if, you know, I don't know how branched out our Hallmark people get, but I recommend it to all Hallmark people <laughs> to watch this Lifetime movie because it's amazing. Aww. And it also has Thank one of my favorite fun. ladies, Dolores Drake. She is incredible. Oh, Dolores. Wasn't she great? Everything she's she in is amazing. Great. So uh, we like to kind of finish off our uh, interviews with what we call the like sort of fun questions and the Right. They're just silly questions. Sure. Um, and so the first one is, what is the best ice cream flavor? Uh, mint chocolate chip. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, come <laughs> on. And, and by the way, you'll notice it's in Switched for Christmas because it is mine and Tracy's favorite flavor. Oh. See, now oh, when I go back and rewatch it, I'll know. I'll say, He's mm, eating mint chocolate chip ice cream. Mm-hmm. That's an Easter egg. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. And then... Your favorite color? Purple. Amazing. That's um, my favorite color. <laughs> I love purple. <laughs> it's a very regal color, too. So yeah. it all comes back to oh. royal Christmas, royal wedding. You'll okay. See in the flag. So St. St. Odd's flag has purple in it. Nice. Amazing. Nice. Okay. Um, and then this is what it would have been what's in your CD player right now, but it's now phrased. What music are you listening to these days? Well, as I was cooking a dinner party last night, I have to say on Pandora, I did do the Justin Timberlake shuffle. Amazing. Uh, so. that, is, that's the, that is correct. That's correct. <laughs> you know, as it got later in the evening and a couple of, maybe a glass of wine down, and it might have turned into Buddha, Buddha, Buddha bar, but let's just say it was definitely the, the Justin Timberlake shuffle is usually my go-to cooking dinner for my family and friends. Amazing. <laughs> All right. And then what is your go-to date night food? Sushi. Ooh, amazing. Um, <laughs> and then what is your go-to date night activity? I can't say watching Hallmark movies. I'm binging my binging television shows. Amazing. Or, Good. I, live, what, I live on the water, so sometimes taking a, walk, a sunset walk on the beach is... Oh, well, that's... Since I walk on the beach and then come home and binge watch whatever TV show or television show we're binge watching at the moment. Awesome. What are you working through right now? Um, it's not very... It's, it's, we're, right now, we're on a Killing Eve. Oh. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. It's really good. It's really good. You know, I, I, had, I, I had withdrawals 
some I did I did in Ireland re binge watch all of Downton Abbey. <laughs> so I've done it twice now. So because I was so sad when that was over that I had to do it again. I had to watch the so whole good. whole five seasons and six seasons all over again. So good. And I might do that with Game of Thrones when it's over. Start all over again. Oh my goodness! When it's over, let's have a non Hallmark yeah. podcast and talk about Game of Thrones. Rachel right. won't be there, but I will. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I I don't know what I'm going to do when it's over. And then dogs or cats? Oh, I can't. I have a cat. I'm staring at a giant Maine Coon cat right now in my house, so she would kill me if I didn't say cats. But I am an animal fanatic, so any if there's an animal if you behind the scenes the horses that's castle i was all over so i'm in just i just love animals more than life so all that was animals, a very good I, so political both. answer and to not offend cats but nor dogs true. look know. at you but i'm so responsible at cat right now <laughs> I, have to say, I have to say if i had to choose to be cats because i'm staring at my cat at the moment good uh we agree fiona also said cats which... She has three amazing Maine Coon cats. I've seen them. I've been in her house. Amazing. See, now mm-hmm. I need to get a Maine Coon cat so I can match. So we can be, yes. te- so we can be, uh, I don't know. But they have like, to be a rescue. A rescue only. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to yeah. pay for a cat. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I'll pay for its shots and stuff, but yeah. there's just so many cats. Yeah, why, would so you, funny. why would you exactly. order a specialty one? I okay. know. Well, people, people do. Okay. And then suit and tie, not suit and tie, um, fancy dress or sweats? Ooh. I know. What I mean. It's, you know, I, that's like my wardrobe. I'm either in sweats or a fancy dress. So it's, I have no middle casual. So I, <laughs> you know what? I would say fancy dress. Amazing. Okay. Um, yeah. You're you're like the second person to ever pick that, and I'm just really happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, um, what is your favorite holiday during the year? Christmas. That's right. Christmas. <laughs> that is correct. Very. Good. But it but it is. I love Christmas. I have a soft spot for Thanksgiving because I love to cook. And I love how Thanksgiving brings people together. But I always think Thanksgiving is just like the appetizer for Christmas. Yes. So that's that's just when we show five new Hallmark movies during the week instead of just the usual four. Right. I would love (laughs) to make I would love to make a Thanksgiving a Thanksgiving movie if if they ever do that. I would be thrilled Mm. to do that. Okay. I I, I would like you to make a Thanksgiving movie. That could be very good. That mm-hmm. could work into the firehouse concept. You Rachel, could it, stop, you could, oh, stop pitching our firehouse. No, you, fire. could, <laughs> you could make it Thanksgiving at the firehouses. It would be good. We could. It could be. It could be a fireman's Thanksgiving. And they'd have to respond to all the people trying to deep fry turkeys. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be good. It would be a good well, montage. It, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea. They could... So, you know, people practice ahead of time. So a week before Thanksgiving, he could yeah. go to someone's house who had an accident practicing and fall for someone there. Just yeah. say, he wrote it here now. <laughs> <laughs> it could work. Yeah. All right. And then the last question is really tricky. Um, and you can choose one of your own. Um, favorite Hallmark movie. There was a Hallmark movie. I don't know the title because I do you have a favorite do you remember one was it with betty white and it was a flashback to like her love story when she was a kid yeah the lost valentine i think lost valentine we actually yes. just profiled that today on uh, our instagram how random is that i love that one <laughs> i love that one yeah. but i love all of them but i do particularly love that one yeah, that, that one, one yeah. made me cry that, that one, one is so great it's so sweet i know i love that one i know sometimes I it's just kind one. of unfair like to like to put the hallmark hall of fame ones because like betty white for pete's sake but no that one is so adorable yeah for sure i mean how do you beat betty white and a world war ii flashback (laughs) (laughs) you don't but i have to say that the the levels of the woman the fireman and the cat one was right up there with one of my favorites it's so good it's really good. I mean, thank you so much for coming Thank and talking you. To us. <laughs> uh, 
So it, do, you have, do you have social media that people can, if they want to follow you or anything like that? Or Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, on Facebook as my name. And I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. It's Lee M. Friedlander. Great. Or it's Lee Friedlander. Um, Twitter's Lee Friedlander one and Instagram is Lee M. Friedlander. Okay, great. I don't use it a lot. I'm so bad about social media, but I'm, I've been told by some of my friends that are, do social media they're like you have to get on Fiona's like you have to get on Instagram I'm like okay I'm like okay I will I will I promise yeah it's so I'm gonna of... I'm gonna be better about it but I also I follow a lot of the Hallmark Instagrams and stuff and I'll chime in on everyone else's and I know Tracy's on so okay but we'll, yeah, we'll have I'm that. gonna get better about being on social media too We'll have that linked in the description below if anybody wants to follow Lee. Make sure you're subscribed to us on iTunes and on uh, YouTube. And uh, make sure that if you, if you have a second to, we really appreciate comments and, uh, and uh, ratings, reviews on iTunes. If you have a sec, uh, that would, is very helpful. And uh, make sure you're following us on uh, our social media, on uh, Instagram, and uh, at Homework is Pod on Instagram and on Twitter. And we're all over the place. We try to post daily. And uh, so, Amber, where can people find you? As always, I'm at Amber Brainwaves on Twitter. And that's it. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. And so I'd really appreciate you subscribing to that as well. And uh, we will uh, talk to you all again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>